guys this is coach cookie your life and relationship coach welcome back to rising higher where i coach cookie share with you some snippets about success in your everyday life and today we're going to focus on the characteristics of toxic people and my main focus will pertain to the male and the female narcissist but before we get started on that i would like to talk about my episode from last week where i provided tips to my listeners for teaching their children at home during the pandemic so i've received several comments about this episode and the two tips that really helped them out a lot was getting a copy of their education goals for the school for the school year from their school and the second one was having the child do a daily check-in with them to explain what they learned that day or if they were having any problems If this sounds interesting to you and you missed this episode, it was called 10 Tips to Help Parents Survive the Virtual Classroom. Check it out. I would also like to remind my parents to please remember to take time to love yourself so you can be everything that you can be to your child. If you want to get some tips on self-love, check out my very first video called How We End Up in Toxic Relationships and How to Break the Cycle. Okay, today on Cookie's Commentary, Cookie's commentary is going to be near the end of the video today because I have a special activity that I want to talk about and focus on that centers around the topic for the day. So I decided to let that be my commentary for the day. With that being said, I'm going to jump right into keeping it real. This is when I answer your questions that you may send to me. This one is for another client that I have, and her name is Tabitha. Let me say this real quick, too. A lot of the questions that I've been getting are from women. I do not want the men to feel like I'm not here to answer your questions. Please send in your questions, and I will be happy to answer them. Send your questions in to heycoachcookie at gmail.com. Okay, so the question for today is from Tabitha, and she says, Hey, Coach Cookie, how do you feel about a long-distance relationship? I've been in one for the past year and I'm wanting some tips as to what can make our relationship work. Okay, you want some tips on what you can do to make your relationship work. Okay, I do know a couple of my friends that I've that uh, have had long distance relationship and they had their relationship for like seven years, long distance relationship for seven years and they got married and they're still married to this day. But then on on the other hand, I have a family member that did a long distance relationship and it didn't work. There's not very much that I know about you, uh, Tabitha. Was it Tabitha? There's not much that I know about you, Tabitha, when it comes to this this particular relationship. So let me start, let me, I'm gonna answer this in a twofold. So the first thing is, is that make sure that you guys have met each other. I, I don't know, Tabitha, if you met him online or through social media. The first thing you need to do is meet this person, okay? If you have it, that's the first thing that you're going to want to do. Meet eat, meet each other. I want everyone to know that if you're going through a long-distance relationship that you want to be serious about, you're going to want to make sure you get the opportunity to meet each other. That picture that they have posted online or on the on their channel, that they sent you because you're doing this online dating or whatever you're doing you don't even know if that's really them and if it is it may be from 20 years ago make sure you really know who and what you're dating you think you're dating a woman and it's really a man so meet each other and then determine if you like the way they look they talk their personality okay so that's the first thing now if you know this person on the other hand if you know this person you both have met you really like each other and you're in a long distance relationship okay and you've known each other for a while okay great so you're saying you've been doing it for a year okay it's going to be important to make sure you know that what you guys have is genuine with that being said there should be a special emotional connection between the both of you it's going to keep you motivated while you guys are separated. Does that make any sense? In other words, the connection and the bond is so real. When you're not with this person, it's okay for you to be alone until you see each other again. When you have that kind of special connection, you feel like 
when you talk on the phone with each other, you both are naturally stimulate and challenge each other while you're in the conversation. But at the same time, still try to see each other as often as you can. Hopefully also the ultimate goal is to eventually get rid of the distance part where you both are in the same space. The sooner you're able to do this, it's gonna increase the chances of staying committed in the relationship. So I hope that helped you out, Tabitha. That's my spiel on the long distance relationship, okay? So let's get right into it. I'm all excited about this. Let's get into the topic of the day. Most of the time, when we talk about the characteristics of a toxic person, it's, a, it's associated with some type of personality disorder. Most of the time, when I mention personality disorders, I'm going to be referring to the narcissist because all of my toxic relationships that I've had, I was involved in, I believe they all were narcissists. So that's mainly going to be my target when I refer to toxic relationships. I was married to the kid's father. He was a narcissist. I had children with him. So it's really important to be able to recognize and understand the characteristics of the narcissist so you can protect yourself from their power plays and establish healthier boundaries. I'm gonna really take my time with this one today because this is something really important to me because I really feel that if this is something that I knew or somebody had told me this when I was going through what I went through, I don't think I would have went through two other relationships. So I was probably midway through my second relationship in my mid forties before I even realized the term narcissist. I'm gonna kind of give you a scenario to let you know what it looks like when you actually see these people. So when you first meet the male, nar male narcissist, he will use his attractiveness, his charms to entice his mate. He's gonna brag about his age, how much he has done, and talks about how great he looks for his age. The men are usually preoccupied with obtaining money, and usually they will do anything to keep to get that, even if it means stealing it from their own family. And eventually, they might mean taking advantage of their significant other or their mate that they're in a relationship with. The male narcissist is gonna spend money on cars, houses, and they wanna show off what they have and they brag about how much money they make. But when you first meet the female narcissist, she uses her attractiveness, her body to gain superiority, to entice her mate. They are overly obsessed with their appearance. They would do anything to keep looking young. They don't talk about their age or how old they are though. You don't usually find that in the female narcissist. That's pretty much the meet and greet. That's what it's gonna look like when you first meet the narcissist, okay? While getting to know you, the male and the female narcissist, they're nosy and they're trying to pick up and learn everything that they can about you, everything that you desire in a mate. All of a sudden, they're gonna become professional actors and actresses and they're gonna portray the perfect partner by mirroring what you desire in a relationship. In reality, at this time when they're doing this, you don't really know what they're doing, but in reality, the narcissist's sole purpose is to fulfill his or her own personal needs because they have an emptiness, they have a void that they're trying to fill, and they need someone to fill that void. And this is called supply. They depend on this supply to fill a void that they are missing. As you continue your relationship with the narcissist, they're going to put their best foot forward to impress you. They may pur purchase expensive gifts, take you on lavish trips, tell you that you are my soul bait, you are everything I've been looking for my whole life, where have you been? Nobody can make me as happy as you do. And it may even get to the point where they tell you they want to marry you. So this dramatic stage of the relationship is called the love bombing stage. This stage can last anywhere from, I would say, six months to a year. Now, I have heard, heard people say that it lasts longer than that, but usually it lasts anywhere from, from six months to a year. When the narcissist think that you they have you hooked, 
there will be a gradual change from this love bombing stage. So the idealization or the love bombing stage is going to change into devaluation, to the devaluation stage. Simply put, the love bomb stage is over. In other words, the honeymoon stage is over and they're about to show their true colors. This is what it looks like when they break down their true colors. They're self-centered, they're demanding, they're arrogant. They refuse to admit when they're wrong. They require constant uh, admiration and think they're better than everyone else. They have no understanding of any type of pain. So they're not able to express their emotions such as compassion, regret, or remorse. They know when you're having these problems, but they don't know how to react to the problem because they just can't relate to it. So since they lack empathy for your feelings, they make the relationship all about them. Their behavior surfaces on every area in their lives from friendships to families and love relationships. So they're not able to self-reflect because they don't really think there's anything wrong with them. So they are resistant to change or do anything different. Uh, they pretty much think that they're going to make you feel like something is wrong with you. You are the blame and you are the problem. That's what you're going to see when you see the true colors. Now, the male and the female nurse, there are a couple of subtle, subtle differences that I want to pinpoint on. Those are the target ones that I just mentioned. A couple other I want to mention about the male narcissist that you don't see that much in the female narcissist. The male narcissist wants to control everything about the female mate. What you wear, where you go, when you come back, why you got that on, don't put that on, do this. They're in control. They want to know what you're doing and where you're at every single minute of the day. If you have children with the male narcissist, they feel like the children are a nuisance and frequently... They're going to complain about the children getting all the attention and it seems like they get jealous and they believe that all the attention should be toward them. And then we have the female narcissist. She has some a couple of subtle differences too. The female narcissist is very, very competitive and she has to be the best and in control of everything and every single situation. If she feels threatened by you, you're going to be kicked out of her little clique or her, her little group. And I think some of your girls, you know what I'm talking about. You know, if you don't fit into that clique, you don't fit in that group. If you if she thinks that you threaten her like you're cuter than she is or you're smarter than her or something is different, you're out that group. If you can't get in program, she, you're out of the group. The female narcissist is very, very, very materialistic. She has to purchase items that makes her look better in front of other people. The female narcissist, she loves drama. She's going to keep confusion going. She's going to be the one that comes to the family reunion and she's going to tell somebody else about somebody else and do something and say something. And for, before you know, it's a big argument at the family. There's a big family feud at the family reunion and she was the one that started it. The female narcissist has a big sexual appetite. She is going to use her sexuality to her advantage She's going to dress provocatively and she's going to be the one that you're going to be in the real man. You're going to be in a relationship with her and she got her eye on somebody else. So she's going to kick you to the curb and she's going to be with your cousin or your brother or your, you know, she's going to get what she wants the way she wants to get it. But she might try to keep you and the way she's going to keep you is she's going to try to get pregnant by you while she go why, and then she leaves you and go be with your cousin okay that's the female narcissist okay also uh, this female narcissist is really a trip really and truly she is she, watch out husbands watch out leaders people who are trying to get their lives together who try to be in the lord who trying to do right you're trying to be a good husband she's coming she's coming she wants to destroy the homes. She's trying to destroy the churches. She has to be, she wants to destroy the leaders. Her role and her job is to destroy anything in leaderships. And that's what she shoots after. Okay. So a lot of times the female narcissist will go to church just to make it look like she wants to make everybody think that she's that girl. No. Okay. So. A little different twist that I have for you guys today. I wanted you guys 
to brainstorm and think. I really want you to think. Let's talk about the male narcissist versus Lucifer. Okay, it's very interesting that the male narcissist has the same characteristics as the archangel Lucifer once he was cast out of heaven. Okay, he was cast out of heaven because he became arrogant, thinking he was better than God himself, and he went to overthrow God. Okay, of course, we all know the story, and Lucifer lost the war in heaven, and he was cast out. When he was cast out of heaven, his name became Satan, which is Greek and Hebrew. That means adversary of God, or more commonly called the devil. And his fallen angels became demons. Once he was cast out of heaven, throughout the Bible, he was mentioned as arrogant, deceitful, cunning, cruel, along with a list of other evil characteristics that are exactly identical to the narcissist, to the male narcissist. This is just what I want. I want you guys to start thinking with me, okay? Then we got the female narcissist versus Jezebel. Let's talk about Jezebel. It's very interesting that the female narcissist, she has the same characteristics as Jezebel. Jezebel loved to be in authority and in control and manipulate situations to her advantage. No doubt about it, Jezebel used her beauty, her sex, her seduction to control men and get what she wanted. Even when, Jezebel, even when Jezebel killed God's prophets, she never accepted guilt, nor did she repent. Okay, so let's take it a step further, and let's really think about this and what we really are dealing with. The Bible doesn't tell us what Satan looks like, and with good reason, because he's not limited to any physical form or image, which would include the human form. Think about it. The narcissist has no empathy, no feelings, no emotions. They can't relate to what that is. Remember, they rely on us to become what they need to fill in that void. They're crafty. So in the beginning, you're all in because he or she appeared like what we really wanted or what we expected. We thought they were our soulmate. So we got all caught up in that. And in reality, their purpose was to destroy us and keep us from our purpose in life. This is really important to me because I wanted to make sure I got a chance to share this with you just to get you to think about what we are really dealing with here. You know, and we're not talking about that in this particular episode, but a lot of these people who have killed these people that have personality disorders are these people such as the narcissist. And so we have to be careful and know that a lot of these stories that we hear, and we're going to review some of those and talk about those in some other video at some other time. But I just want to make sure I get a chance to really share this story with you just to get you to think about really and truly and seriously what we are really dealing with. Okay. So for the activity, I want you to give I want to give everyone the information regarding Jezebel and Lucifer so you can read the entire story for yourself and come up with your own conclusion. Okay? I think this should, would be really exciting and very interesting. Uh, let me see here and make sure I have the correct information. Okay. The full story pertaining to Lucifer is in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 through 19. Again, Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 11 through 19 the full story about Jezebel is in first Kings chapter 16 verses 30 through 21 verse 27 read the stories and share with me some of your thoughts or questions you may have on this topic remember we want to rise higher we want to get to the point where we really know what is going on so we can be productive in our lives and do the purpose that God has sent us here for. Remember to stay focused on your healing because until you heal, you will continuously attract these toxic people. If you struggle with your healing process or, or if you're dealing with some issues regarding a toxic relationship, 
let's talk about it. Contact me at heycoachcookie at gmail.com. Let's see if you could benefit from coaching, okay? Uh, Your first 30 minutes are free. Remember, my inbox is always open. Feel free to contact me online, on Facebook and Instagram at Rising Higher Podcast. This is Coach Cookie reminding you to love yourself first as we rise higher together. Talk to you soon.